फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ क्लास इलेवन साइंस चैप्टर टू यूनिट्स एंड मेजरमेंट इन दिस लेक्चर वी शेल डिस्कस मेजरमेंट ऑफ फिजिकल क्वांटिटीज इन विच वी शेल टेक अप थ्री फंडामेंटल क्वांटिटीज विच आर लेंथ मास एंड टाइम फर्स्ट लेट्स डिस्कस मेजरमेंट ऑफ लेंथ सो इन मेजरमेंट ऑफ लेंथ वी वी विल टेक अप टू कैसेज first measurement of very large distances and second measurement of very small distances so first let's discuss how we will me measure distance between very large distances such as the distance between two heavenly bodies large distances like distance between the earth and a star cannot be measured using meter scale so just by using a scale we cannot measure such huge distances an important method in such cases is the parallax method so let's discuss what the parallax method has to tell us so let's calculate the distance between earth and a star using parallax method so for parallax method we have to follow few steps so st let's follow the step 1 in step 1 we have to observe the star from two different positions on the earth So let's take two different positions x and y on the earth. And while taking these positions we will take the diametrically opposite positions. So x and y are diametrically opposite. Now this is because the diameter of the earth is already known. So in this way we already know the distance between x and y points. And this is nothing but our step 2. so the distance between the points x and y let's call it as b and why we took it as uh, diametrically opposite points the reason is that we already know that this b is nothing but the diameter of earth which is already known to us now this point s is the star so when we will observe the star from both these x and y points using telescopes then these will be the lines of sight so basically this will be the the x s and y s will be nothing but the distance between the earth and the star so x s is equal to y s is equal to distance between the earth and the star and let's call it as b and this is the thing but what we have to find so we have to find this b now let's see how we will find that so let we have come to the step 3 of this method so in step 3 let's take the angle x s y to be theta and we can calculate this angle theta using telescopes and some other instruments this angle theta is also known as parallax angle and plays a very important role in this parallax method now let's see what is the next next step now as the star is very far away from the earth therefore this theta will be very small so we can take xy as an arc of a circle of length b and s as the center so now what we will do is that we will consider a very huge circle in which xy is an arc and s is the center so taking s as the center and xy as an arc we will draw a very huge circle so this is just a rough diagram but in reality it will be completely looking like a circle now in this circle you can see that xy is the arc s is the center and d is the radius so therefore radius of circle is d now let's discuss the step 5 so in the first lecture i told you a formula for the plane angle of a circle so plane angle is equal to arc length of the circle divided by radius so basically this angle theta will be equal to arc length of the circle let's say the circle arc length to be xy because xy is subtending the angle on the center so arc length is xy upon the send upon the radius that is d so now this xy is nothing but b 
and radius is d. So basically, we the final equation we get is that theta is equal to b upon d. Now we had to find the d. So from this formula, we can easily calculate the d because already I told you that theta can be calculated using some instruments, and b is nothing but the diameter of the Earth, which is already known to us. So therefore, d will become b upon theta. With this, we have finally calculated the distance between the Earth and that star. So, in this way, we use the parallax method to calculate the distance between very uh, between very huge heavenly bodies. Now, there is a very important note before solving numericals or parallax method. That is, theta is always taken in radians. So therefore, sometimes we are given in the question, we are given the value of theta in minutes or degrees. So first, we will have to convert that theta into radians. So let's see the conversion of units. So 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes and 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds. So 1 degree is equal to 3600 seconds. And also, 1 degree is equal to pi by 180 radians. So if we put the value of pi in this equation, then we will get that 1 degree is equal to 1.745 into 10 raised to power minus 2 radian. Now, as we also know that 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes, so 60 minutes will be equal to 1.745 into 10 raised to power minus 2 radian. Therefore, on taking that 60 to the lower side of the uh, to, to the other side of the equation, we will get that. 1 minute is equal to 2.91 into 10 raised to power minus 4 radian. And similarly, 1 minute also equal to 60 seconds. Therefore, 60 seconds equal to 2.91 into 10 raised to power minus 4 radian. Therefore, 1 second is equal to 4.85 into 10 raised to power minus 6 radian. So, in this way, we have got the relation between all the units that are degree, minutes, seconds and radian. And while solving numericals, we must remember that we always have to convert them into radians. Now, let's solve a numerical based on parallax method. So, now let's solve a numerical based on parallax method. The question says that the moon is observed from two diametrically opposite points A and B on the earth. The angle theta subtended at the moon is 1 degree 54 minutes. Find the distance of the moon from earth. This is an NCRT textbook question. So, in this question, we are given that the angle subtended at the moon is 1 degree 54 minutes. This is, let's take this angle to be theta. And we are also given that these both these points are diametrically opposite. So, let's take the distance between them to be B. And we have to find the distance between the earth and moon. So, basically, we have to find the D. So this is a simple parallax question, but before solving the question, first we will have to convert the uh, this value of the angle that is given to us in degrees and minutes into radians. So as we have already discussed the conversion of units, we know that 1 degree 54 minutes will be equal to, as 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes, so it will be equal to 60 minutes plus 54 minutes. So it will be equal to 140 minutes. And now we know that 1 minute is equal to 2.91 into 10 raised to power minus 4 radian. So 1 minute is equal to 2.91 into 10 raised to power minus 4 radian. So 114 minutes will be equal to 114 Multiply by 2.91 into 10 raised to power minus 4 radian. So, on, sol on uh, solving this uh, part, we will get that the, uh, this 114 minutes will be equal to nothing but 3.32 into 10 raised to power minus 2 radian. Now, this is the value of our theta. 
because theta is always in gradients. So therefore, theta is equal to 3.32 into 10 raised to power minus 2 gradients. Now, after finding theta, we just have to put the formula of the parallax method. So basically, we already know that this B is the diameter of the earth. So, uh, as we know, the diameter of the earth is equal to 1.276 into 10 raised to power 7 meter. This is equal to 1.276 into 10 raised to power 7 meter. So, we have got theta, we have got B, now we just have to find D. And D is equal to B upon theta. So, basically, we have to put the values of B and theta. We get in 1.276 into 10 is for 7 upon theta that is 3.32 into 10 is to power minus b. Now on solving this entire equation we will get that d is equal to d is equal to 3.84 into 10 is to power 8 meter and this is the solution of the question and this is the distance between the earth and the moon. So in this way using parallax method we have finally got the distance between earth and the moon. So this was about calculating very large distances. Now let's see the other side of the coin. Now we have to calculate very small distances. So a meter scale can be used to calculate distances of the order 10 raised to power minus 3 meter to 10 raised to power 2 meter. So simple scale can be used to calculate th these distances. But an instrument known as vernier caliper can calculate distances as small as 10 raised to power minus 4 meter. And another instrument, the screw gauge, can be used to calculate distances with the accuracy of 10 raised to power minus 5 meter. But sometimes we have to even find distances smaller than that. So for that we use microscopes. An optical microscope, a simple microscope can calculate the distance, distances of 4000 angstrom to 7000 angstrom. So, so small distances can also be calculated using the optical microscope. And 1 angstrom is equal to 10 raised to power minus 10 meter. So you can see how small the distances are. But an electron microscope, my, microscope can also estimate the size of molecules. So it can calculate distances as small as 0 0.6 angstrom. So in this way you can see that how small distances and how large distances we can calculate. Now, as there is a huge variation in the, in the size of and length of distances, therefore, let's see the range of lengths. So, for calculating distances of such variation, we have different units. For calculating very small distances, we have a unit called Fermi. 1 Fermi is equal to 10 raised to power minus 15 meter. Similarly, 1 Armstrong is equal to 10 raised to power minus 10 meter. For calculating very large distances, we have few units, such as the astron astronomical unit, 1 astronomical unit, 1 AU is equal to 1.496 into 10 raised to power 11 meter. Similarly, in other unit, the light year, 1 light year is equal to 9.46 into 10 raised to power 15 meter. Similarly, in other unit called parsec, 1 parsec is equal to 3.08 into 10 raised to power 16 meter. So we have units for calculating distances from 10 raised to power minus 15 to 10 raised to power 16. So you can see the range of lengths. Now after discussing the measurement of length, let's discuss how we will measure mass. So mass is a fundamental property of matter. Mass is nothing but the amount of matter in that body. The SI unit of mass is kilogram kg. But while dealing with very small masses such as the mass of atoms and molecules, kg becomes insufficient because kg is a very large value for such small masses. 
So for calculating the masses of atoms and molecules, we have another important unit of mass called the unified atomic mass unit, the U. 1U is equal to 1, 1 twelfth the mass of an C12 atom. So if we take a carbon 12 atom, then 1 twelfth of that carbon 12 atom would be 1U. And as the mass of cal uh, carbon 12 atom can be calculated, so thus one unified mass unit becomes equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to power minus 27 kg. Now let's discuss the methods for measurement of mass. So masses of commonly available objects can be determined by using a common balance. So if you have ever visited a grocery shop, then you can see that there are different types of balances, electronic balances, these hand balances. So using that, the masses of common available objects can be calculated, like fruits, vegetables, etc. But masses of large objects like planets and stars have to be measured using gravitational method. So using the Newton's law of gravitation, we have to calculate the masses of such large objects like planets and stars. We shall discuss more about this gravitational method in the chapter 8, Gravitation. Now let's see the other side of the coin. Now we have to calculate the masses of very small objects like the subatomic particles. So what we do to calculate the mass of these subatomic particles? For this, we have an instrument called mass spectrograph. Now let's discuss measurement of time. To measure any time interval, we need a clock. For common use, we use a simple clock or a quartz clock. But we use an atomic standard of time, which is based on the periodic vibration produced in a cesium atom. This is the basis for cesium or atomic clock. So, the vibration of cesium atom regulates the rate of the cesium clock. So, basically, the rate at which the cesium atoms are vibrating, on that basis, the cesium clock or the atomic clock works. The cesium atomic clock is very accurate. So, the common clocks which we use, the common watches which we use, can be a little inaccurate. But the cesium atomic clocks are very accurate. A cesium atomic clock is used at the National Physical Laboratory in New Delhi to maintain the Indian standard of time. So basically to ensure that Indian standard of Indian standard time remains very accurate and remains the same every time, we use a cesium atomic clock that is placed at the National Physical Laboratory in New Delhi. So this was about the measurement of time. So this was all about measurement of physical quantities. In the next lecture, we shall discuss more about units and measurements.